Also with us on the broadcast is Major Mohammad Ali Shah, uh, from whom we're going to we're going to you know get an analysis of what exactly it is that is unfolding in Afghanistan and what that is going to translate into. Uh, Major Mohammad Ali Shah, thank you so much, firstly for joining us on the broadcast. Um, you know now as far as uh, the uh, Panjshir forces are concerned, a big blow to them uh, because uh, their spokesperson uh, Fahim Dashti uh, was in fact uh, killed. Correct. Um, what do you think this is going to mean for uh, you know the forces, the anti-Taliban forces in the Panjshir Valley? How big of a blow is this to them? So, firstly, it definitely is a very big blow for the resistance forces who are opposing the Taliban over there. And uh, let me tell you, this has only been possible with the intervention and the help of Pakistani military. It wouldn't have been possible otherwise, because Taliban, I don't think, though they are well equipped now after US leaving. But they were not enough. They were, I would not. I would not say that they were ready and prepared to fight a battle at Panjshir, which is at a height. Unless and until some acclimatized forces who have been specifically trained in high altitude warfare, like Pakistan Army for that matter, some of them, they they have actually fired rockets and they fired on Emma, on, on Amrullah Saleh's house as well, and they ended up killing. Two resident uh, soldiers. One was a spokesperson, of course, Fahim Dashti, and General Abdullah Zara. So it is a definitely a very big setback. And mm. secondly, the resident forces are not getting enough support from the international world, from the external agencies. So it certainly is, is a setback. And I commend the resident forces for having put up a brave fight, a brave front with the Taliban. Okay. And of course, they did give them a bloody nose because just yesterday they had blown up a mountain where thousands of Talibanis had come there and gathered. So they end up getting, uh, so they so they absolutely put up so you know bang on bang on Major Mohammad Ali Shah they of course uh, put up a very uh, good fight but uh, it seems that uh, they have now been defeated by the Taliban because the latest that we are tracking out of Afghanistan is that um, you know the Panjshir Valley the last standing uh, valley that was not occupied by Taliban has now been taken over by the Taliban. Um, what is this going to mean? You know, is there no hope for the people of Afghanistan now? Is it is it is it is it inevitable that Taliban is indeed there and there to stay? Well, uh, being an optimist, I would say no. I would not say it's no hope. There still is a hope. There is no, the the hope is to be very very honest. It is very remote, very very remote, undoubtedly. But yet, one should not give up hope. And yes. You know, now Pahira Taliban, which is actually now actually in a way ruling the roost. Now with the claim of over a month earlier that they have captured over 85-90% of Taliban of Afghanistan. That has come true now, now actually. And that time they have even claimed that they have taken over Kabul. And when mm -hmm. the president of Kabul was of Afghanistan was very much there in the presidential palace. So Ashraf Ghani was very much present over there. So now when they have actually taken over majority of Afghanistan and Pakistan has interfered in that. You know, the Hakai network is iron seats in the Afghan cabinet, that's the Taliban cabinet, so to say now. Hmm. Because now we saw the uh, ISIS chief, General Fayez Ahmed, had come to uh, Kabul. Right. He even met the Pakistani ambassador over there. He had only come to negotiate for the Hakai network to get some seats in the cabinet so that hmm. they have a stake, they have a hold over there. And Taliban had also issued a statement that they would be Swail Shaheen, their spokesperson, that they have every right to speak on behalf of the Muslims of Kashmir and take as per the action they deem fit. They have no right, firstly. They have absolutely no right, but this has only been possible with the help of Pakistani intervention. Otherwise, I don't think Taliban had any hope to have gone as far as Panji is concerned. Hmm, absolutely, you know, uh, Pakistani intelligence, of course, is, has clearly been meddling as far as Afghanistan affairs are concerned, which uh, you know, we also tracked very closely yesterday. Uh, before we move forward, uh, there is another um, big breaking news that is coming in, which uh, points to the fact that um, um, Ahmad Massoud's house is also now under control of the Taliban, according to what we're learning on the broadcast, according to reports. And uh, Ahmad Massoud is, of course, the leader of the opposition group of the National Resistance, F Resistance Front. Um, we're still with us on the broadcast is Major Mohammad Ali Shah. Uh, Major Shah, you know, we were just talking about what it is going to mean now for the people of Afghanistan now that uh, Panjshir Valley, if reports are to be believed, uh, has been taken over by Taliban. Um, there's also one big other question that is what happens to the caretaker president? Because Saleh has been in Panjshir, he is currently at an undisclosed location, he is safe from what we understand, but is it a ticking clock for the caretaker president? 
Uh, see, the caretaker present at the moment, right now, the resistance forces in Afghanistan are ready to come to the table and negotiate. They said that from day one, they said actually we are prepared to fight the Taliban, we are well equipped to, to do that, and we can take them over, we can give them a bloody nose, but we do not want a warlike situation. So a dialogue was the way forward, and I think now people over there are open to negotiation, which is not a very good sign. Hmm. Seeing the fact that the Tajiks will have a, will be will take a beating over there, unfortunately, and my sympathies are with the Tajiks actually, not with the Pashtuns of Taliban. So now when this happens, it is a worrisome sign for all of us, for the world and for the neighboring countries, because we have a border, the POK, I mean it is attached to Pakistan, to Afghanistan, it's about time we actually take back our POK that only, there's only one way through that. And we know Pakistan is the root cause of all evils actually. Like you know, okay, now there was another, another news which I had just, my sources told me that General uh, Fez Hamid landed up in Kabul without the information of General Bajwa, who is the chief of the army staff of Pakistan army. But fair enough, because the ISI, the spy, the chief, he does not, he has his own independent command. He does, but it is not possible that General Bajwa, the chief of the army staff, did not know of him going to Kabul and his presence over there. So it's only the root cause of See, if you take out every single thing, there was Osama bin Laden found in Pakistan. Who trains Jashe Mohammed? Pakistan. Who trains Fred Bombers? Pakistan. Who is giving support to Taliban? Pakistan. Who is eyeing for the Haqqani network seats in the, in the Afghani cabinet, the Taliban cabinet? Pakistan. So the root cause is only one. If that is sorted for some reason, somehow, then a lot can be solved over there, Parenthi. Right, absolutely. And you know, um, as far as uh, the Taliban is concerned, uh, the Taliban, of course, is going to show no mercy. And although there are, there are the conversation now is heading or was heading, in fact, towards, uh, you know, the Panchi resistance forces being in, involved or being included in the government. Now, the fact that Taliban has taken over Panchi or claims to have taken over Panchi, that seems to have flown out of the window because Taliban would not want to give the Panchi res resistance forces a voice in the government if they've already taken over the valley. Very true. You are bang on over there, exactly. Now, the, now it is, you know, it's going to be uh, a power game. There's going to be fight for power. Already Taliban has delayed announcing its cabinet for by, for by, by a week now. Now, Hibatullah Aspandada, who is going to be the Supreme o, who's going to be over and above the Prime Minister and President and like the Iranian form of governance. Similarly, now, again, Mala, Mohammed, uh, this guy, brother, uh, everyone, Mana Yaqub, who is Mohammed Omar's son, everyone is going to Sahil Shaheen, Sheru, who was trained at the Indian Military Academy, Sarik Zayed. So everyone, there is going to be fight for power. And there is, they, and you have to understand one thing, that Afghanistan has, they were actually mercenaries basically. Now they have a very subdivided society, they are split, they are divided in different groups. Tajiks on one hand, the Pashtun on one hand, the Hazara on one hand. So now we got to wait and see if, when Taliban actually forms a government, how many seats will they actually give? They have said so. They will not give any seats to women. They've already declared it. But that was some agreement which Taliban had said that they will give equal rights to women. Let's see how many seats they have for Hazaras. For Let's see how many seats they have for Olympics, for Tajiks. Hmm. But I doubt it. Now, let's, now when Haqqani network comes into play, then Pakistan actually gets Taliban by the neck. So Pakistan and Taliban are going to be one actually then. I would call them just one. When this government is formed, everyone's keeping their eyes closely knit on what is going to happen, who will take over the government next. So now I'm talking about Sheru, the science guy. He was trained at the Indian Military Academy. Anybody who has been trained at the Indian Military Academy is made up of steel. Just today, I think just today, I finished 18 years of the time I was commissioned at the Officers Training Academy. Mm. Short, short, SS, SS 76 of course. So anyone who has had military training is made up of steel. That is the best army in the Indian Army and Afghan army was trained Correct. by the Indian military. And they were also trained by the US military for so long and uh, after which, uh, you know, whatever has transpired now is raising a lot of questions about U.S.'s presence in Afghanistan. Just quickly take my um, question from uh, Major Mohammad Ali Shah, sir, if you can hear me. Um, now, you know, we were just uh, speaking about what is transpiring in Panjshir and, uh, you know, the fact that um, not only Panjshir but now there are other uh, reports that are coming out that suggest that Pakistan is activating its air bases close to Afghanistan. 
Um, so on one hand, you know, Taliban has taken over uh, Panjshir, which is, uh, you know, a, a big victory for them. And on the other, you know, Pakistan is also setting up satellite uh, uh, satellite uh, uh, bases. They're also setting up, uh, um, you know, bases on the eastern front in Balochistan. Um, how much are we or how much is Pakistan then in that case emboldening Taliban? See, Pakistan has now fought Taliban from where it actually needed to catch it, to get full control of Taliban, a lot of control in fact. Apart from the ISI's chief, ISI chief uh, General uh, Fares Hamid landing up there and trying to negotiate with Taliban, so two other satellite bases, namely Kotli and Rawalkot, okay. which have been activated along the border with India. So it is a dangerous situation, very, very precarious situation over there. Now they've also activated the air base and 12 active and equal number of satellite bases are ready for their operations. But this is at such a crucial stage. So it's certainly, it is worrisome, but let me tell you, they cannot harm India from any side. We are fully prepared. What they can at the best do is take full control of Taliban and they are trying to get, because the Taliban, Cabinet, as I just, just discussed, it's not fully, it's not made as yet. They are still deciding what to do, what not to do. Now, Pakistan is flexing its muscles. They are doing, they're leaving no stone unturned. They are trying the best to show what they can do and how they can harm the world. They are basically learning psychological warfare from China, I would say this. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, Major Mohammed Ali Shah, uh, if we also talk about the significance of Panjshir, during the time when uh, you know the NATO forces uh, were in um, Afghanistan, uh, it was very clear that Panjshir was in fact one of the safest regions. Um, so what is it now going to mean for the people of the Panjshir Valley that have in some way or the other you know, supported the resistance forces? Because as far as Kabul is concerned, every single person that is going against what the Taliban uh, preaches is being hunted down. So then we can expect a similar kind of backlash in uh, Panjshir Valley as well. See, I will give you the example of the Pakistani Air Force of the activities in the Eastern Front, where the Shamchi F Air Base is in Pakistan. The Shamchi Air Base was also used by US against Taliban, in fact. So when they actually activate that region, which was actually on a plus for them, certainly, I mean, they have a slight edge over there, but I will not really give them the full advantage. They have full advantage over there. Because Samshi Air Base plays a very, very crucial part in that dominating that region. So yes, when uh, Pakistan interferes, certainly, I mean, Taliban is going to, is getting its wings, and but the wings will be chopped very soon, I hope so, because the international forces are not going to be supporting mm -hmm. Taliban. At the end of the day, it is a terror organization. It supports organizations like Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda, in fact, even congratulated them. So I don't see Taliban actually getting much support from the international community as well. But now, is Panjshir Valley safe? That's the golden question that you asked mm. over here. Well, when Taliban actually comes and uh, assassinates two of their soldiers, General Abdullah Raza and you know, and the spokesperson, so of course it is definitely a worrisome sign. But let's wait and watch actually what exactly happens because Abdullah Saleh and Ahmed Masood, they said they will not give up. Hmm. So I hope in their negotiation also they are smart enough to negotiate, even if it comes to negotiation, they do not give in to Taliban for that matter. All right, absolutely. Uh, appreciate you taking the time out and joining us on the broadcast uh, to provide those insights. Thank you so much to Major Mohammad Arisha.